Welcome back to The Breakfast and it's time for our first hot topic which is on uh, the approval given by the federal government for the postponement of the 2023 uh, census. We've been joined by Mr. Nick Agule, public affairs analyst who's joining us from the UK. Hello, Mr. Agule. Thank you very much and good morning to our viewers. You are welcome. Now, not a few Nigerians described the census as ill-timed when we were told it would be taking place between the 3rd and 7th of May. There are also some who believe that, look, no matter what, we should have had it because we haven't had one uh, in 17 years. What's your take on these positions? My take is that uh, it again shows how our government are not able to do very simple and basic things. Uh, because if the postponement is due to the elections, which is the reason that is being profiled, by 2019, we already knew that we we're going to have an election in 2023. So it's not as if an election has just come upon us uninvited, unannounced, in the way COVID came upon us. So those who planned the census at the same time that the elections were to hold, they, 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 where were they? they? Did they not know that Nigeria was going to go into a general election? So th this, is, this is the whole malaise that we suffer in Nigeria because we have uh, square pegs in round holes at almost all the levels of governance in Nigeria. People who don't know they are left from their right. You see, we need to plug in our best 11 to run Nigeria for us to get results. But from every indication, we don't even plug in our 58 11, our 100 11. We have people in position who carry on as if uh, they've, they've never been to school. So this, this whole carnage uh, uh, that has uh, resulted into the postponement was uh, people uh, failing to plan. When you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So they plan to fail, and they have failed. So that is the situation that uh, is facing us right now. But all the money that was supposed to be used for the, um, for the census have been, have been provided. So why was there a need at all to postpone it and all that? So I don't know. Which means they had planned. They put out a budget. It was approved, and everything went well. And suddenly, it has been postponed. And one of the excuses that the, uh, the government gave is that the next administration should know what to do about the census. Is that a good enough excuse? It's not a good excuse at all. It's not even an excuse. Uh, the same government that is saying that uh, the next administration should deal with census, only yesterday, the president was issuing Agenda 2050. Why is he issuing Agenda 2050 uh, without waiting on the next government, which is to begin the implementation to take it forward? So I think that is a baseless excuse. Uh, it is a total lack of planning. And, and, and to be honest, let's, let's also not uh, uh, forget that the Nigerian Population Commission, the agency uh, vested with the responsibility of conducting this census, they may not even have been ready. They could be using all these other reasons as cover up. It's possible that they were not even ready. We have seen in Nigeria that even general elections have been postponed. I think the 2015 election was postponed, was not even the 2019 also. So they, they will have agencies that are in place that people are not doing what they are expected to do. And then uh, when they can't uh, get things done, they begin to look for reasons. And also, you mentioned about budget release. Um, 
Let's not also uh, be oblivious of the fact that the budget though approved may not have been released. Yes, the, the Federal Minister of Finance may not have given all the money to the National Population Commission as uh, we think they, they, they gave them. It's possible also. So that is another another thing that we need to uh, understand because it's possible that uh, they, they don't even have the money. So there are all sorts of reasons, but the, the bottom line here is that we have um, uh, a commission that was unable we have a commission that was unable to uh, to to conduct the census in accordance with the timeline that they have already published. Okay, let's talking about this money that has been earmarked for this census. Um, 1.8 billion US dollars. Uh, if you're going to say it in naira, looking at 869 billion naira. Well, Nigerians are not happy about this. Uh, a large section of Nigerians have criticized it. In fact, they are asking for a breakdown and um, public display of the breakdown so that people can take a look at it. Having analyzed the fact that Nigeria, say we have 203 million in population, is earmarking this kind of amount when India that has a population of 1.5 billion people uh, used 470 million in 2021 to conduct their own census. And then you go further, you have Brazil that conducted theirs in 2022. Uh, they have a population of 215 million people and they used just 450 million. Pakistan has a population of 232 million people. They used 413 million in 2023 this year. But Nigeria with a population that's not up to any of theirs, is earmarking 1.8 billion US dollars for this. How do you respond to the call by Nigerians asking for a list of the states and local government areas that will receive some of these allocations and public display of how this money that has been earmarked uh, will be spent? I fully support those calls. I totally align myself with those cause. Nigeria is owned by all of us. We are shareholders in Nigeria. We are the shareholders. Those who are running Nigeria are the executive team. <clears throat> we hired them <clears throat> to run this entity for us. And it is their duty to report to us transparently what is happening. The figures you have, you have uh, read out now, you can see that our budget, in fact, um, you converted the budget to about 800 uh, billion. billion. And that is using uh, the, the official, the so-called official rate to convert it. If you convert it at uh, the 700 plus that were actually buying dollar in the, in the market, uh, it's over a trillion. <clears throat> so this country is, is trying to spend over a trillion to count us. Over a trillion to count uh, 200 million people. That's a lot of money. And the, and the, and the data you have read out from other nationalities, again, it is, it's not uh, a new thing to us. We, we already know that this is Nigeria where, uh, uh, you know, people come out and say all sorts of things. They went, during COVID, uh, we heard how much was being used to, to feed uh, school children. You know, we have heard how much they used to buy fire trucks. Uh, we recently heard that they were, or in fact, they had already borrowed $800 million to pay as palliatives uh, to Nigerians for a few subsidy removal, something that has not even happened. You know, so a government is uh, leaving the decision to remove few subsidy to the next government. But that government takes it upon themselves to go and borrow $800 million and share to Nigerians uh, on account of fuel subsidy removal. So if Nigeria was a human being, Nigeria would have long been dead because the, the, the quantum of corruption, the, the amount of blood that they are sucking out of this country, 
He would have let this country brain dead by, by sins. Mm -hmm. That just to tell you how much God loves this country. That Every day, the people in government, what preoccupies them is how much they are going to take out of Nigeria, how much they are going to squeeze out of this system. And setting the agenda for the incoming government, if they are coming in, they have to come in on the premise that they are our servants and we are the owners of Nigeria. And as servants, they are accountable to us for every couple of our money that they are spending. You know, so until we get government, put government's feet to the fire, those who can vast for our votes, fight over, kill and maim because they want our votes, they want to lead us. Until we put their feet to the fire and ask for accountability, demand for accountability from them. We're not going to have a Nigeria of our dreams and our youth will continue to jack back to other countries where you have such accountability play out. All right, let's look at um, the role that population census plays with regards to economy, with regards to the Nigerian economy, um, the equitable distribution of the nation's wealth. Tell me the role and how it can affect uh, the sharing of our revenue. And do you see any political undertone to the postponement that we've seen uh, with regards to this census that should have taken place and we've not had it in 17 years? So uh, let, let me address the, the, the political undertone uh, before I then come to the role of a census. Uh, there is nothing that uh, is capable of being ruled out in Nigeria. There's nothing. Uh, I will not say politics is not involved. Politics might as well be involved because we have heard in the past how population figures have been rigged. It's not only election uh, figures that we rig. We also rig population figures as it has been alleged in the past. So it's possible that <clears throat> for some people, um, they don't want the census to hold because they don't want to. They don't want Nigerians to know the the, the number of people that are resident in each state as claimed. That is that's that's possible uh, because um, if uh, uh, federal locations uh, or even uh, local governments and all of those kind of things are based on populations, uh, then, then that means uh, people are interested in, um, in rigging the, the, the figures or they don't want the population census to hold so that the true figures uh, may not be known. It's, it's also a reason. And now coming to um, uh, the, 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 the advantages of a population census, a population census is a, a key economic planning uh, tool because you cannot be providing for people when you don't even know their numbers. I, I, imagine that uh, you, are, you are trying to buy food for, for a household. I don't know the number of people that are in that household. Then you can see that you're in problem. You can either buy a too little food or too much food. It will only be by luck that you just buy food that uh, goes around everybody. So nations elsewhere uh, use population uh, uh, sensors as a very important economic uh, planning criteria. I'll tell you one thing. Now, here in the UK, the government uses population figures to know uh, the, 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 the social services that they need to, pre uh, they, they need to uh, um, provide for the citizens. So, uh, like in this area where I am now, I'm, I'm in a, my, my local council is called Hillingdon. So, in Hillingdon, they know the population. They know the children that have been born. And they know when those children will get into school when they are age five. And they are already looking at the capacity of schools around and determining whether by the time these children are ready to start their primary one uh, at age five, whether the schools will contain them. And if the schools are not going to contain them, they are already building schools now or adding to existing schools now to account for those children when they are ready for school. The same thing they are doing for hospitals. The same thing they are monitoring to see whether they need to expand the roles, uh, housing, they need to increase the housing, they need to increase the, the number of uh, uh, general practitioners that you have. Because, you know, here in the UK, uh, healthcare is at three levels, primary, secondary, and tertiary. At uh, primary level, every family has a doctor. You have your personal doctor. So there will be a doctor in the community where the people around that community go to. 
That, that's your first point of call. Is a doctor that is that doctor called a GP that must refer you to a hospital. You don't just walk into a hospital like that here. Uh, your GP, your personal doctor must send you there, except it's an emergency. So they are already planning how many, whether the GPs they have in that community are going to be enough. If they are not going to be enough, they are planning to increase the number to take care of the people who have been born or those who are migrating into the area. That's the kind of thing population data is used for. And so in Nigeria, population is expected to be heard every 10 years. And you see that the last population that was heard, I remember that population very well because I was in Port Harcourt in 2006. Even though I was not counted, but I remember that population. That was uh, 17 years ago. So we should have had another population census in 2016. We didn't have it. Angole, and now in that, 2023, yeah, Angole, we're still having that, these issues. Yeah, that, during that election, uh, that census of that time you're talking about, uh, did, did you see officials come to mark houses in preparation for the census? Houses were marked. Like I said, as at that time I was in Pohakot. I was living in Pohakot. Yeah, so, I'm asking uh, that question I, because in the build up to this one, I, I haven't seen any houses being marked. But I don't know if it has to do with the deployment of technology that we've been told will be part of how this particular one would have been done. So, it, it, this is the point. Um, uh, they, they say they are deploying technology, but the fact that they are deploying technology. Uh, does not mean that there are some manual processes that should be eliminated. And, and this is the point where communication is very important. You see, when you are working on behalf of the people, you see, the problem is that leadership in Nigeria don't think that they are working on behalf of the people. They think they are the lords and the people need to worship them. Otherwise, you need to communicate clearly to say, look, uh, in the last census in, 20, in 2006, we didn't come to, we came to enumerate all the houses. And we mark the houses that we have enumerated so that uh, those who are coming behind us will not make the mistake of enumerating them. Now, we're not going to do that this time because technology means that we have the, the maps. We have the maps of the, of the area online uh, so that people will understand. You know, so I, I, I am totally not ruling out the fact that the National Population Commission itself was not ready. I'm not ruling out that. Time. And, and you know, if we were in, a, in Senate crimes, like here in the UK where I'm speaking to you now, if something of this magnitude, a national population census could not hold, and people have already made plans based on the calendar and all of that, of that, of that time, and it does not hold, the parliament is going to carry out a public inquest into why this thing did not happen. So that it will be very clear to people, like, see, we're sitting here, we're, we're just thinking, okay, this could be the reason, this is the reason they are telling us, not credible and all of that. And new quest should have been heard, because money should have been spent to deploy people and all of that and all of that. And now that it has been postponed, when next is going to happen again, they are going to repeat spending those monies again to deploy people, equipment and all of that. And somebody has to be held accountable for that. Because that is money that has been wasted for which Nigerians have got no value from it. So there needed to have been a public inquest into saying, why did this thing not happen? How much money was spent uh, already? And how much money that will, will have to be spent again because of this postponement? And somebody would have been uh, held accountable for this until we, we start holding people accountable for their failures in office. It's not going to be well with us. Though. So bottom line, you may not trust the figures that are, are being put out there that Nigeria's population has risen to. They say it's possible that Nigerian population is now 210 million. Can we believe this figure or is just a figure put out there for the benefit of some people who are selfish enough to try to, you know, distort the figures? Um. Uh, at the risk of contradiction and grave error, uh, I live in uh, in the UK now, and the population of the UK is I think 65 million now, thereabout. And I know that UK is just like 25 percent of Nigeria in land mass. So UK total UK that is made up of four countries 
of England, West, Scotland, and Northern Ireland will go into Nigeria four times in terms of landmass. And there are 65 million people on this, on this land. And I don't see the kind of population density that I see in Nigeria and the UK. I don't see it. For you to see people, plenty, the way you see, you know, Jualegba, Imushi, you know, uh, in Ikeja and all of that in the UK, you have to go to maybe something like Oxford Street, where uh, uh, shoppers, including tourists, are, uh, you know, on the road, you know, pounding the street to, to try and uh, shop and all of that. In the rest of the other parts of UK, and I have traveled widely here, you hardly see the kind of crowd you see uh, in Nigeria that are on the road. So if I if I extrapolate, if I extrapolate UK, 25% land size of Nigeria, 65 million people, to Nigeria, where everywhere you turn, you see human beings. I, I think if they count us properly, we could be approaching 300 million. It's, okay. it's my own personal judgment about okay. it, based on empirical evidence. So, I think Nigerians will be approaching about 300 million if they count us properly. Well, lack of data is really, really impacting on us negatively. Mm -hmm. It is possible that we are up to 300 uh, million. It is also possible that we are not up to 200 million. But we should start talking about the need to keep good data, good, keep good records in Nigeria, which we lack. Everybody just does things the way they, they want to do it. And you were in Port Harcourt. Why were you not counted? I was wondering. I waited in my house with my family for the number of days they say we should remain at home. And nobody showed up. Absolutely nobody showed up. And I, I, I lived in, a, in a Ormini Ezeku Street in, in an area that was popularly called Cocaine Village in Port Harcourt, just by... Uh, uh, artillery junction there and uh, they never came to our house and then I, 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 when I went to work when I went to work after uh, the population shutdown ended in our office of maybe about 10 people I think they, they only came to about 2 or 3 houses majority of us say nobody came to our house so that's, those are the issues with Nigeria you give money to people they don't do it and they come out, they give you numbers. Right. And nobody is being held accountable. So that's the problem. This is Alan. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is Alan. Welcome to Niger. Well, I think that's the much we can take from off the press. Oh, sorry. I said off the press. press. Topic. From our topic, uh, topic. Talking about population postponement of population census. I would like to thank you, uh, Nick Agule, for coming on the program today. Thank you very much, and Nigerians and... Uh, and uh, have, have, have a nice day. We're looking forward to the coronation of uh, King Charles this weekend. Yeah. I hope uh, uh, Plus TV is sending reporters. If you're not sending reporters, I can go and report at the, at the venue for you. Please we'll report, for you us. Report, report for us. Report for us. And I understand that uh, Tiwa Savage will also be there to represent Nigeria. Yeah. So we're covered. Exactly. Mm. We're covered. Yeah. Thank All right, you, Thank Nick. you, Nick Aguirre, for coming. All right. Okay, we were talking about the postponement of the uh, 2023 census by this administration. They say that the next administration should be in charge of that uh, when they come in. And we're wondering where the monies that were already budgeted went and what went wrong, actually. And we're hoping there will be an inquest into that so that we get to know what really happened and when we are going to have the census. We'll take a break now and later on, or just in a, a moment, we'll be joined by somebody else, Tolani Thomas Allison, who will be talking on decisions that you need to take when setting up a business. Stay with us.